Hello, everyone. So my name is Joshua Rich. I work for Elastic as a technical support engineer, which basically means I um, help awesome people do awesome things with a bunch of our products. Um, today I'll be talking about um, something which is uh, we probably all use, and I guess I should start with saying like if, the, if everyone can raise their hands, who uses ping? Who uses it as a diagnostic tool? There's no judgment. This is a safe space. It's a good tool. Awesome. Great. All right. This, this talk is going to be a bit about ping, and I guess your expectation level should be Billy Corgan in a roller coaster at Disneyland. Kind of looking slightly frightened, unsure about what's to happen. It's the happiest place on earth. I'm not really sure why it looks like that. I'd be, that would be really exciting. Anyway, ping theory. Everyone knows how ping works, does it? Don't they? Does anyone, everyone knows identifier, sequence, sequence numbers, that kind of thing? Do I need to run through this? It's pretty simple. Ping is a pretty simple protocol. You have an identifier, a sequence number. That's how you identify the ping packets coming back and forth between you. And your identifier, usually on Linux, I think is the PID of the process, which sends the ping. The sequence number, you just increment that every time you send a ping. Your, your echo reply, it just contains the same identifier number and the sequence number. That's how you can keep track of it. It's a very simple protocol. If you lose packets, that's loss. Um, damage packets, that's loss, you know? It's a very, very simple pro protocol. And if you're a visual learner like me, um, you can actually see it in Wireshark. You can't actually see it there, it's a bit blurry, but if you go and look at the packet, you can see the identifier and the sequence number there of an ICMP ping. And when you go and look at the reply, you can see that the identifier and the sequence number are the same. And if you send a whole bunch of pings, you can go and match them up, that kind of thing. So it's a really nice protocol to like, you know, if you're looking to play around with Wireshark, it's a very simple protocol to like keep track of things in and I guess, you know, understand the very cool Wireshark tool. Um, I guess I'll also talk about some inspiration for this talk, which um, who uses, um, who's heard of this, this thing called smoke ping? A few people, yeah, yeah. So does anyone actually, has anyone got it set up or using someone else's, sneaking onto one of the like ISP's um, open instances of smoke ping, looking at all their, their stats, yeah. So yeah, it's a very nice tool. It shows you ping times, it shows you standard deviation averages, that kind of stuff. Um, it's a very cool tool. You can drill down, you can look at things. Um, when I started working for Elastic, we have a bunch of products, um, Elasticsearch, Kibana, and um, the cool, what I thought was, you know, I could probably recreate that um, using Kibana and Elasticsearch. And so that's what I set out to do, and that's what I think I have achieved in some way or implemented a little bit of it. So I'll introduce this tool I've just written, and it's based, called PingBeat. Um, it's based on beats, which I'll go into a little bit now. And all that it does is it does one thing, or two things. It does two things really good. It, it does pings and it sticks those ping times into Elasticsearch, which you can then use Kibana or other tools to grab that data out and analyze it or look at it. Um, so just a slight diverging here um, to talk about Beats. So the Beats, they're all lightweight shippers. Um, what they're designed is they're designed to do things like uh, ping beat. They either like get your system metrics, stick that into Elasticsearch, um, get, read a file, watch it as it like, has lines written to it, stick that in Elasticsearch. Um, so they're all like, like little, tiny little tools which do one thing and basically use this elastic stack to sort of like um, send that data somewhere. So yeah, there's a bunch there. There's packet beat, which is sort of like a layer seven um, protocol analyzer. Top beat, which is the file, uh, file uh, system metrics, uh, system metrics, that kind of stuff. File beat for tailing logs. And then your beat, which in this case is ping beat, um, which is what I've written. And it's, uh, it, it just sits in there in the stack. They're all written in Go. They're very small on memory and CPU. Um, it's really easy to write these tools because we have this thing called libbeat, which basically is a wrapper. It does all the stuff about talking to Elasticsearch, um, initializing things, that kind of stuff. So all you have to do is essentially, if you're a sysadmin like this, write crappy code to just like sort of um, sit on top of it and do something. So yeah, so um, you can actually check out a demo of um, uh, the Beats products. In particular, you can check out PacketBeat um, if you go to demo.elastic.co and you can dig in and you can see some things like, for example, this is like basically a Kibana dashboard of MySQL server metrics. So up in the top right, you can see the various different, um, I guess, MySQL uh, commands you're issuing, some response times, the actual queries and that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. It does nice little sort of like analyze, I guess like what Wireshark does, but at a higher level at layer seven sort of thing in network speak. Um, so PingBeat, on the other hand, it does pings. 
Um, so it's basically, I guess, sort of a layer two, three tool. Um, as I said, just sends pings, gets a response, sticks it in Elasticsearch. It's a single binary, because of Go, everything's statically compiled, that's all you need, and a single config file, so it's nice and easy to deploy. Um, it supports uh, any outputs libbeat supports. The one I use, obviously, is Elasticsearch, but you can send stuff to Logstash, Redis, other places. Um, it's only a tiny, like, resident memory, like 10 meg, you know, so it doesn't interfere much with your server. It has very little CPU usage. It's just sending pings on a network socket. Um, and yeah, so the idea is that you just go and install it everywhere on your network, and like Smoke Ping, does a sort of like analysis of the latency across your network, or you know your LAN, your WAN, whatever kind of network setup you've got. And it's available now, so you know if you're using Go, you just go get it. Um, otherwise, you can go and check me out on GitHub. Um, yeah, so um, I don't have much time, so I'm just going to quickly go through some things. So yeah, here's a dashboard of what I of, I created in Kibana which is basically the output from ping beat. It's not very clear there, but in the top left, there's the actual like, raw data, which is the time the ping took, you know, what target it was going for, what the actual ping was. The graph on the right, that's actually ping times. I think that's over a, uh, maybe a 24-hour period. That's my home server there, so it's pinging various hosts. Um, you can see I've got a fairly good um, network connection. Well, anyway, from the data we can see here, there's some top 10 hosts and top uh, 10 worst hosts and some um, percentiles and statistics on those uh, ping times. What the cool thing about Kibana is that you can, you know, and Elasticsearch, is it's, it's search first. So you can just search for a bunch of hosts or a tag or something like that and narrow down your results to just specific hosts. In this instance, I've just narrowed down my results to AWS. Um, so I think this is EC, the two, um, I guess, uh, AWS endpoints for EC2 and S3 in Australia in the Sydney data center. And you can see the response times there, and there's some big spike there of latency. I'm not sure what the period is there. I can't really read it from here. Um, so yeah, so it's really nice that I can just zoom down, or I can just search for stuff and like sort of narrow down my results. So if I have a lot of hosts, it's really easy for me to kind of like drill down and see what's in here. And that actually led me, um, when I installed this onto my... Um, my uh, home server, this actually led me to um, discover something quite interesting. Um, so yeah, once I set up my little ping beat and started monitoring my server and looking at the pretty graphs in Kibana and everything, I, um, I noticed this thing. Um, so this is one day, this is um, that lump there, that's um, my ISP's servers. So that's the ping time to my ISP servers. Down the bottom there is my local host, uh, like my local LAN server. So I think the red line is my router and the purple line is my repeater. I obviously need a better repeater. Um, but if you just look at the ISPs, there's a pretty significant bump there. Um, and that's from about 7 p.m. to about 11 p.m. each day. Um, it actually happens, yeah, it happens across any, any hosts on my, from my like, um, connection at home. So this is all other hosts which I'm pinging, like so Google, Amazon, all that kind of stuff. All of these things at the same time have this like peak um, here. And I'm like, well, that's really weird. What happened? Um, and if I go and look at a seven day period, so I zoom out in Kibana and look at a seven day period, it happens every time, every day, at the same period, this like lump happens. And I'm like, what the hell? You know, that's pretty shit. You know, that's like getting, that's like almost a threefold increase in latency on my internet connection. That's not what I'm getting paying for. Um, Oh, I'm missing some things. And what it turns out um, is, yeah, that that's the Netflix effect. This, happened, this started happening around March um, 2015, um, when Netflix suddenly appeared on the Australian market. Um, at the same time Netflix appeared, everyone else made my internet connection really bad. Um, so it was just an interesting side effect of uh, plotting this data, like doing this simple metric, putting it in Elasticsearch, looking at it in Kibana, and seeing this visual representation of it, and Quite an interesting and um, significant uh, thing. Fortunately, now I'm not on this ISP, so yeah, screw you guys. Um, so yeah, so um, that's it, actually. It was a really quick talk. It's so, sort of like, just to show you, I guess a lot of you have heard about, uh, actually, just raise your hands. Everyone's, has anyone heard of Elk Stack? Used it for logging? Yeah, all right. So yeah, so this is sort of a different, I guess, aspect of it. You're still using the E and the K part. You're just using a different part instead of the L, the log stash part. You're using a B part, which is beats. And there's actually a few other beats out there. These, these aren't me. These are other people in the community who have written them. So there's a unified beat, which um, allows you to index um, 
alert records from like an IDS software, um, sort of like I think whatever I think Snort, whatever Snort supports, one of those um, formats, Nagios, which means that you can actually send Nagios alerts and metrics into Kibana, which means that finally there might be a nice GUI for Nagios. Um, Factbeat, uh, which does uh, Puppet Facts, um, and HSBeat, which does JVM stats and metrics. So yeah, there's some other tools to check out, So, and I highly recommend you go and check them out. And as I said, these are all lightweight tools. They're very small, very easy to install, and they're great to play with. And if you want to write your own, obviously, we have this libbeat framework, open source, Apache license, very nice wrapper, lets you just basically focus on whatever the metrics you want to like write into Elasticsearch and ignore that actual implementation of Elasticsearch. Um, anyway, that's the end of my talk. Um, I'm actually running a tutorial with my friend Mark um, from Elastic as well um, on Thursday, where we're actually going to help you guys stand up an Elk stack and um, look at some open data with it. So if you're interested in this stuff and um, want to try out something, come on Thursday, 10.40 a.m., D2.211. Um, and yeah, we can um, have some fun with Elk. Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, questions or we've got a bit of time for questions if anyone has questions. No questions. Oh, yeah, there's one there. Who was your ISP? Who was my ISP? I don't think I this is being recorded, isn't it? I'm not going to incriminate myself like that. It was okay, I'll give you a hint. It wasn't the it wasn't the um, most popular ISP and it wasn't the second most popular conglomerate ISP. Um, so that might narrow down the don't narrow down your suspicions, but um yeah. Any other questions? In fact, everyone always asks that at every conference. What's your, who's your ISP? They're always like, am I on that shit ISP? Yeah. Any other questions? Oh, yeah? Yeah, so actually, I'm based in uh, Canberra, and I've actually, yeah, so that's another interesting thing is I'm on fiber, fiber to the home. Unfortunately, you can all be jelly at me. Um, so yeah, um, so that's actually fiber to the home. So yeah, that was, um, that was pretty, pretty uh, uh, bad. What, what it's actually showing there is probably just that that ISP runs their contention ratio a bit, maybe a bit finer or sloppier, I guess. Um, you know, so you're basically sharing your internet connection and they, maybe they need to sort of um, share less users together. Any other questions? No? All right. I hope I see you guys on Thursday. Thank you. <laughs>